Hi friends! Welcome to Mrs. Hitchcock's art class today. Uh, today we are going to draw a rhinoceros. Uh, not just any rhinoceros, we're going to be drawing something that's called a Durer pattern rhino. Um, and I have a short video that I'm going to put on here for you to watch. But this is what our, our rhino is going to end up looking like. <clears throat> This helps us learn um, different lines, patterns, and contrast. You can color this in any way you'd like. Um, I'm gonna use some markers and probably some crayons. If you have markers and crayons, that's great. Also, you can use watercolor. If you have some watercolors, that would be fun. I'm using printer paper again. Um, very easy, very simple to do. And I will show you step-by-step step how to draw this dino, or this rhino, he's really cute. And we can have a lot of fun with um, all different kinds of patterns to fill in his spaces. Okay, so here we go. Albert Durer was a German painter and a printmaker during the Renaissance period. Durer made his rhino woodcut based on a written description and a loose sketch by another artist because he had never seen a rhinoceros in real life before. In fact, most Europeans at that time had no idea what a rhino looked like because they were not native to their area and only a few specimens had been brought from India to Europe. Durer's rhino depiction became the only rhino that many people in that time period would ever see in their lifetime. I'm going to be using a Sharpie marker to draw my rhinoceros. Uh, you can use a pencil if you want to with an eraser. That way if you uh, do a line that you're not too happy with, you can go ahead and erase it. Um, I'm not going to be able to erase because Sharpies don't erase. All right, I've doubled my paper just in case my Sharpie leaks through to my drawing table. I don't want to have a mess. So we're gonna start on the right side of your paper. Remember how you do your hands? When you put your hands out like this, this hand, your left hand, makes an L with your finger and your thumb. So this is left and this is right. We're gonna start out with kind of a U shape, kind of on an angle. See that? It's like a, almost like a big smile. And then we're gonna fill that in to make it look like a half a moon. Have you ever looked up at night and seen half of a moon shining in the night? This is our rhino's face. Mine's gonna have a skinny face because I made it skinny. Well, I don't have a, I have a Sharpie so I cannot erase it. If you want a wider face, you can go ahead and erase it and make it a little bit wider. Then up at the top here, we're gonna do two simple little ears, right? Rhinos have ears. I don't know if you've ever seen a real live rhino. Maybe you've been to the zoo. Um, maybe you've been over to where they live. I'm not sure. Then we're gonna kind of section off the end of his face and that's gonna make his horn. Rhinos have a big horn on the end of their nose. And then we need an eyeball. Our rhino wants to see. So we're making just a little eyeball. And it's, we're, we're making a happy rhino, so I'm going to put a smile on my rhino. And then they also have another horn sticking out of their face. The body of our rhino is very simple too. We're gonna start at the top of his head Go over and then down. Very simple. Now we just have to fill in some legs. How many rhino, how many legs do a rhino does a rhino have? A rhino has four legs, so we're gonna go over one, up and then down, over, up, around, and down. That's two. How many more do I need? That's three. That's four. Now I know it's kind of fun to make those up and down and around, but try to stop at four if you can. And then we're going to take this leg and meet the face, just like that. Our rhino also has a tail. They have a tail kind of like an elephant. Some little hair at the end. And then since these don't really look like legs yet, we're going to add some toenails. All right, elephants have these cool toenails too. There we go. Now we have some toenails on our rhino. 
Now the fun part begins. We get to divide our rhino up into different little sections so that we can put some patterns in him. Oh, hi, Jeffy. He's gonna try to get the rhinoceros's eye. He sure does like to help. Ooh, come on. I'm gonna go ahead and divide my rhino in half. Put a line right there. You can put your lines wherever you want. Then I'm gonna divide up the sections a little bit more so that I have some spaces to put cool patterns in. You can put your lines wherever you want to. I'm just kind of breaking it up so I can have some fun, different fun sections. I think I want to do that right there too. All right, now if you want to use your, your black marker or your pencil, you can, or um, you can use your crayons to do this next step, or even if you have colored markers. I'm gonna go ahead and, I'm gonna go ahead and use my, my Sharpie marker, my black marker, and then I'll color it in with crayons. I'm gonna do some diagonal lines in this box here. And then I think I wanna do some polka dots, so, which are circles, little circles all over. And I kind of think I'm not wanting to break that. That's kind of a big space. I want to break it up just a little bit. And I'm going to put some horizontal lines this way. Remember, horizontals lines go across of your across your page like they're laying down, and vertical lines go up like they're standing up. I'm going to do some little dots in this horn since I made my horn so small. I can't fit a whole lot in there, so just some little dots. Maybe some zigzags in his horn. Almost like little M's or W's. Um, let's see, this is a big space here. I think I'm gonna put some little stars. Um, you know, stars can be difficult. If you wanna do the big open stars, you can. Or you can do just the little cross lines together to make a star. Either way works. There we go. That fills in that space space pretty good. Now I love uh, like curly cues. I don't know why they're just they're kind of fun. You put your pen down and you go around and around and around. You can make them as big as you want. Or you can make them as little as you want. But it just fills that area in with some different shapes, different designs, different patterns. Okay. Um, Hmm, what else should we put in there? Jeffy, what do you think? Hmm, do you want to do some? Oh, you cannot have my Sharpie. Nope. That would not taste good. That would not taste good, my friend. I'm going to do some squares. You know, squares have four straight sides. And I know I have zigzags over here. But I think I want some more zigzags over here because I had to make my zigzags small because I made my nose kind of small. And then over here, I'm gonna do kind of like a plaid. I'm gonna put some diagonal lines on there. But then I'm gonna go across those lines. Look at that, that's fun. Isn't that so fun? So we have one, two, three more spaces. I'm not gonna do anything in his face. I want his face to remain kind of plain. I want that to be like a little focal point. So we're gonna leave that plain to contrast the all the pattern in his body. I think I'm gonna do some wavy lines up here. I've got a lot of straight lines going on. So I think I'll do a few wavy lines. And I have two more spaces. Hmm, what could I do? I know, I'm gonna do some rows, lines across, rows, and then watch, watch what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put some dots inside of my rows. Look at that. That's different, huh? There we go. One last space, and this actually makes up a triangle. 
So I wonder what could I do in that? I, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna make more triangles since it's such a perfect triangle. I'm just gonna make more triangles inside of it and they're gonna each get smaller and smaller and smaller. There we go. There. Now I like that. I'm also gonna leave his tail empty because it's a very small space in his tail. Now, whatever kind of things you have that you can color with, you are welcome to use. I'm gonna use crayons. That's what I have available. This is called red violet. So I'm gonna make my rhino have a red violet face. It's also fun when you switch to a different area to go ahead and switch colors so that you don't have two colors right next to each other. You're gonna help color? Jeffy, you love to color. Oh, he loves to peel the colors off the crayons too. This is cerulean blue. That's a fun color. Oh, look how bright that blue is. Whoop, you wanna help, don't you? Looking at all my colors here. Purple, purple is fun. And you can color each line in separately if you want to, but I'm kind of treating each area as its own color. Yellow is a nice one. My crayons are getting dull. Does anybody else have any crayons out there that are getting dull? Here's a different color green. That's kind of a deeper green. I like that. And I don't know if I have a real red. I do have a real red. I'm going to put this place really red. Make sure you stay in your lines when you color. Now that makes me feel like I need orange now that I have red. And maybe a little bit of pink. I'm gonna put some pink in here too. I'm not going to use black. I don't want black on my rhino. I want him to be colorful, as colorful as I can make him. I like color. It's fun to have something bright to hang up on the wall for a pretty picture. All right, so I think I've used just about every color that I have in my crayon bucket over here. Oh, I have green yellow. Let's see what that looks like. Ooh, kind of a lime green, the color of spring. I have two more squares and the tail. I think I'm going to do the tail, this red violet, like just like I did the face, kind of balance them out a little bit. I'm also going to do his toenails, the red violet. I just made a decision. Every space that doesn't have a pattern in it is going to be red violet. I'm going to color this one in a little bit darker. Oh, I don't want blue next to blue. What am I doing? I can't do blue there. I need to do a green. So I made a little mistake there, and you saw that I had put some blue in that area, and it was right next to the other blue, and I realized it. But I didn't get all mad. I just went ahead and colored over it, and you can hardly tell. So it worked out perfect. Now, I can't use blue, green, blue, purple, or pink. So what could I put in here? Maybe a light orange. We don't have a light orange yet. There. That's nice. That works. My music stopped, I'm not sure why. Now, if you wanna put a background on your rhinoceros, you can. Um, 
You can make them on a gr on ground, like grass, or you can just make them like a painting and have just a solid color around him. I think that's what I'm gonna do. This is kind of a bluey, blue purple. I'm just doing it quickly to show you how we do it. See how quickly that fills in the area? And it's not perfect, but it's just filling it in. This is just something creative to get your mind thinking and working well, something different. Okay. And you can fill up your whole paper if you want to. You can change colors if you want to, but that is the Durr Pattern Rhino. How much fun is that? So, what did you think of your rhinoceros? Pretty fun, huh? It's neat to be able to put all different kinds of patterns and colors inside something that you normally wouldn't be that color. Um, rhinoceros certainly don't have tons of patterns and colors on them. Um, but it's fun to go ahead and do that. I like my rhinoceros. I think Jeffy likes it too. He's been pretty good today. So I hope you enjoyed the rhinoceros. Um, next video, we will probably learn how to draw something that a lot of you might do in the summer. Come here, Jeffy. Get this bird off my head. I don't know if any of you ever get to go to the beach, but our next video is going to involve something that you typically make outside. All right, I'll see you later. Thanks for joining.